day four, everybody. We're going to get this thing started in just a second. Good morning. How is everybody? Real good. How are you, honey? I'm good. Thanks. I good. love seeing all that homework that showed up there last night. I'm still working on mine. Well, good. You guys have, that's the whole point. It's not finished. It's just going to keep on moving through, taking action. I'm, I'm trying to cover a 40 year career here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we need to talk about that. We might not be able to cover everything <laughs> for 40 years. <laughs> that's the whole point too how can we tell people about the 40 years without telling them about the 40 years and plus this new career is not in the music business it's in the film business and the commercial business and all of the other places that could use some of this old music i've had around for years nice nice well great it's great you're doing the work that's all that we're asking is just for people to do the work just show up for it the best you can and you're going to see some results welcome everybody welcome to one sheet wonders we're here day four this is happening hey we're here and we're going to start reviewing one sheets very shortly i can't believe how many one sheets now i knew a lot of people were taking this seriously just 68 comments Throughout the week, everybody's been just really showing up for this, and it's just blowing me away how many people are taking massive action, getting these one sheets actually across the finish line, and here's my first draft. And today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be celebrating. We're going to be celebrating all the hard work that you're doing, as well as giving some helpful feedback along the way. So we're going to definitely be reviewing a ton of one sheets today. That is the whole point of today is to get more clarity around what it is that you're doing and see if there's a way that we can even make it louder and clearer to the whole world, your fans, your potential fans, your potential friends in the industry, the different decision makers that are out there, not only in licensing, but also in the artist cut world. We want to make sure that you're making the loudest and clearest statement possible. So definitely need the feedback. Thank you. We're happy to give it. It's going to be so fun today. Welcome, everybody. By the way, I just want to do a quick intro. I'm John Kleinbell. I'm a producer, songwriter here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm the co-founder of Two Indie along with Sonnet Simmons here. Sonnet, you want to give a quick hey. intro? I'm also a singer-songwriter. I have had a lot of success in sync over the years. Used to run a music licensing company have done a number of years of coaching and instruction around bringing your career to a sync space um, and showing up authentically in that. So this is the culmination of us. You guys are profound, amazing artists. And so how can the world know more about what you do in a clear way? We've seen a lot of the unclarity and now we really want to, we want to help you get to the clear places and, and it keeps, we keep, we keep working. It's an evolution, right? Some days it's super clear and then we create a whole new record and we have to start over again. And that's okay. That's it's not like one and done. Um, so yeah, that's what we're here to, to really help you solidify and get clear on. And I love seeing all your faces in here today. Some amazing artists. Today is kind of like a listening session, except we're not listening to songs and giving feedback. We're li we're looking at your one sheets and what's and listening sessions are so important and vital. We get information from watching other people get their feedback. And John and I send each other our songs. We're like, what's your feedback when you're so close to something and you're creative and you're feeling like you're. You, it's it's so nice to have somebody from uh, the outside to see be like, well, this is what I'm getting from it. You're like, oh, like John the other. He was like, you have two pre courses. I was like, I do. Like, so nice to have somebody outside of you giving you some feedback. You're like, yeah, it looks like a country artist. I do. You know, so it's nice to this is this is the time where you get that feedback. You get to stay clear and focused so that every action you take after this feedback from us stays really clear and focused. Yeah, because the whole reason we set up this challenge in the first place, the whole reason One Sheet Wonders is here is because we ha it's a direct response to what we've seen time and time again, not only as because both of us worked for an agency and we were fielding different requests from not only the agency side, the music supervisor side, but we were also working with a lot of independent artists that were not very clear with their messaging. And what we want to do is get you from that place of that messy place of like that not so good messy place there's a good messy place which is like 
the evidence is all around us in terms of the one sheets that were dropped in, just taking a lot of action. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the messy, vague, unclear messaging that can really get in the way of doing business in the world. So, you know, that's really the whole reason why we set this thing up. We're so excited that you're taking so much action. Piper's here to also help. Hi, Piper. Piper. <laughs> She's uh, How just about I everybody give her a good hand to our yeah, two give wonderful Piper coaches. Applause. Give, give Piper a round of applause. <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll butt out now. Brad just finished eating some food. Um, but hey, so let's do a quick, just because like there's probably a couple of new people on here. You're like, well, what is this thing? What is this one sheet wonders? So just want to do a quick recap. We're going to talk about just really briefly what we did in days one, two, and three. So day one, quick recap. We talked about understanding branding. We talked about what branding is. We talked about why it's important. We talked about what is the game plan to building an effective brand as an indie artist. So definitely catch each of the replays if you can. It's not too late to do the homework. The homework assignments don't take that long. I would argue that the homework assignment from last night was probably the most challenging out of all of them. Would everybody agree with me there in terms of like, because you have to... <laughs> Oh learn how to put the visual stuff together it's it's really again i cannot state how impressed i am with how many people f actually followed through with the work because it is not easy it's a simple plan but it's not easy stuff so you know but if you're if you're behind on the challenge it's not too late to get started just jump in and start with day one though because we really laid the foundation of why branding is important to indie artists doesn't matter if you're in licensing doesn't matter if you're trying to get make f further progress as an artist, building your fan base, all that stuff. It is so important. And then day two, we talked about defining your why. It's like who we are, because that's really important. Your business, your music business needs a purpose because a ship with no destination goes nowhere. I mean, it will go somewhere, <laughs> but it's not likely to be the place that you want, right? So we want to really like the whole thing with day two was like, let's give your art some bearings. So that's what we did. We led through a, a long list of different questions. So you'll want to catch that replay as well, because it's going to be super helpful in setting together everything else that we're doing during this challenge, including like the foundation of everything that we're going to be doing from here on out, because there's a lot more action that we're going to be taking together. Let's see. So yeah, it's talking about like, and then the homework for last, uh, not two, not last night, but two nights ago was to create a mission statement and a vision statement for your business, for your music, for your brand. And then yesterday we covered how to make a one sheet. What is a one sheet? How, what are the components of a one sheet? And how do you start to do that in Canva? Which is a really great place to start. It's free. There's, you can do a lot of stuff with it for free. And it's an amazing, like what you see is what you get editor. And at the end of this exercise that everybody did last night, how excited are you all that you have a piece of your branding that you could literally print out and hand to somebody now? Let's see some ones in the chat. You see some ones in the chat if it feels good to have something that you put into words and put into visual format that you could actually print out and send it or email it to somebody or use this as the basis of your new website. One slash two. <laughs> Mildly excited <laughs> on the fence. That's okay, too. Very excited. It's okay to be very excited. It's okay to be like, ah, I don't know if I did it right, you know, but there's no right or wrong with this. That's the good thing is that there's no right or wrong with this. It's just you, this is the starting point. And what we're going to be doing today is helping you refine the message. So the message is important as well. So we're going to be addressing not only stuff that we see with the one sheet, Maybe some grammatical stuff, maybe some layout stuff in terms of having it be visually striking. Because what we talked about yesterday is that one sheet needs to be visually striking and it needs to provide information. So the, we're going to be talking about the information that's on there, which is going to be going around like, what's your why? What is your why? What is it that you're trying to say to the world? And then how does it look? And then how do those things kind of work together? I'm so excited to dive into this. This is going to be so fun. Yeah, you don't have to have your one sheets finished today, but you're going to get a lot of insights. The thing's going to be cool. We may not have the time. I guarantee you we're not going to have the time to go through everybody's one sheets and give feedback, even though I would love to be able to do that. No, but feedback on one is feedback for everybody because you get exactly. to really hear and you get that reminder of, oh, you know, I think I have to tell my whole life story, but actually you need to make very clear, like, 
what is your value? How are you in partnership with this person? How, how do they, how can they see what you have is what they need? And that's really how sales works in the most authentic and real way. It's not just like here, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's like, look, I have something you actually need. Let me make it very clear what I have so you can see what I have that you need. Whether that's your fans who are like, I need a song that makes me feel like I'm driving down PCH and my windows are down and I'm just like free to the wind 20 year old on a road trip, or I need the song that's for this next target ad. Whatever it is that your story is, making that clear is how you extend the branch and how you connect the bridge, how you make it possible for them to see so clearly without feeling like you're being salesy, without you feeling like you're being a pest, you're feel, you are saying like, hey, this is, this is what I do. I am actually a great problem solver for you. Um, and that is what we're going to keep remembering as we look at these one sheets today and give feedback on them is how clear is it? Are we getting that message? Is your value and what you bring to the table and who you are and what you stand for coming across to all of us? Absolutely. Yeah, let's dive in. We're going to look at some one sheets here. I know, Sonnet, you. Are you ready? Okay, let's do this. Sheets, right? Yeah. Is everybody oh, ready wait, I have to be host. One sheets? Is everybody ready? Let us know. Are you ready to, for us to dive in? Let's do this. All right. Can you share your screen or do I, I need to give you, oh, okay. No, no, I can't. I just, I just reclaimed the host spot. <laughs> Good. It's like, why don't you just give it to me in the first place? Why I take it away? Not you, but Zoom. Yeah, yeah. No, no I don't mean you. So I mean Zoom. <laughs> so weird. The whole, the whole way with Zoom and how it like, you have to share permissions or you need permissions for certain things. It's kind of confusing, but. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm going to I'm going to start with Catherine because she was the first brave soul to post hers yesterday when there were zero in there and she posted hers. So let's start. You guys all see that fine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I think just like from the, well, maybe we could all read it, but I think from the get-go, we're just looking at spacing and how it like hits you right away. The, her picture kind of feels like a little bit close to the edge and the, and the words feel a bit close to the edge. But I love this image of her. I love that there, the color scheme here seems to be like there's a, there's a color scheme that's starting to unfold. And so how do we create something like this and make it feel like it has a little bit more flow as a, it's a little bit more like it stands out um, just aesthetically so that it's not like boxes and it feels like it might be falling off the page any moment now the words might not fit on there. Um, and she's got the right, I feel like she's got the right pieces here. Now it's a matter of like putting them together with a little bit more space and um, we can go through the copy as well. But yeah, I love know, these colors. Yeah, some things I might say too, I totally agree with that. And I, I'm wondering why the why the QR code is like up at the top right. It's like, it's it's almost like, the QR code is more important than knowing what it's about, where it might be for my taste. And obviously like this is always going to be our feedback. It's all, take what you like from what we say and leave the rest. Uh, but I would probably be reversing the importance of the, actually the QR code going towards the bottom because people aren't going to want to click on the QR code and unless they like what the content that's on the page itself. Um, I agree that the copy, I love how legible the copy is, by the way. Yeah. We haven't even read a single word about it, but I love how easy it is to read the copy. So I think you did a really nice job there with the contrast. Uh, the photo, now it's a little hard to tell sometimes with this, but I wonder if that photo is a little low resolution is what's happening there. Uh, but we'll know as we share a couple more of these, if it's just something that Zoom's doing in terms of artifacts. Uh, but like it, it does look uh, in this visual that I'm seeing on the screen, it just looks a little fuzzy. So I wonder like, is the, is this a high res photo? But I also wanted to make note, I love how you used the colors in the photograph as the theme, like the, basically the color palette that you're, so you can see like there's a similar red on the guitar that's happening up at the top. And there's like a cream color on the left hand side that seems like it's like part of the either your skin tone or the background that's happening there so i think as far as like the color scheme i think this is like totally working i just think it's like it's a matter of prioritizing the information maybe perhaps like there's also like this quadrant thing that's happening with it mm -hmm. that um you know it might be better to experiment with more centering the text and more 
putting the your photo like in the center and then kind of working around there. But there probably is a cool way to do this particular format. I think it's an interesting look. I just would probably reverse. I'd put that QR code down in the bottom. I'd put your image, your photo up at the top. I would also put your name. One thing that is getting lost here as well is your brand name. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if your brand name is syncability. Is syncability more like a uh, like an attribute that you're you're wanting to project with your music, or is that literally? Or is it like a logo? I wasn't sure. Yeah, so that's another thing that could be used to be clearer. Uh, you could literally just reference that in the top of your copy if it is a brand, just so that people are clear that that's your brand name. But uh, but that's my feedback on it. Um, do we want to read through the copy? Yeah, let's read through it. And I think this is just an example of how it feels to start something. And you start with like, oh, well, there's squares and it's compartmentalized. And then also what happens when you start like with a song, when you start writing within the bars? Well, what happens if I if I extend this phrase over the bar or if I cut it a little bit short and I start experimenting with what it looks like to be a little bit outside of the lines? Like if you drag the picture and it goes across the whole thing and then you put the, you know, like what does it, what does it look like to kind of start playing with the lines a little bit? so you don't have to feel so um, contained. There's there's yeah. some fun funness here to explore. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read this copy. Let's uh, let's give it a read. It. Catherine Lynn Nemeth is a songwriter and lyricist who specializes in writing for and co-writing with other artists in a unique way consistent with their message and voice. She has written in a variety of genres, pop, folk, country, rock, singer-songwriter, soul, blues, jazz, and gospel. I could actually just stop right there and make a couple of comments. One thing I might suggest, just because the number of different genres that are listed out here can feel a little bit overwhelming, I might suggest, I would probably venture to guess that most everybody out there, if they're a writer, if they're an artist, probably if, if they do work in like, what is this, like seven or eight different genres, you probably work in two or three of these genres way more than you work in the other ones. Am I right? So if I'm right there, maybe it's picking like the top three. So that way it feels a little less like it's, it's, it, it's like do everything. Cause what we want to do is we really want to, when we're doing our branding is we really want to dial in and make it focused because if we're everything to everybody, we're nothing to, to nobody basically. It's like we're, we're getting lost in the sea. So that's my, one of my thoughts on this. And then I feel like that first sentence, there's a slight amount of like run on kind of vibe I'm getting with it. So maybe there's a way to split that up into two different sentences. I don't know. Uh, Sonnet, I don't know if, how you feel about that, but, uh, but I like this copy so far. It feels very clear. Like I understand exactly what's going on, which is important. Right. Yeah. And what I really like about it is we often get like, oh, I'm a songwriter. So how do I brand myself? And I think she's done it very clearly in this first sentence of like, I'm I'm a songwriter that helps support my, the artists that I write with in in helping their voice get across um, in a unique way. And that feels like a very clear branding statement that she is sharing here. I also think in terms of like sharing the all the genres, that's like a uh, easy way for people to start tuning out like your eyes glaze over you're like I know all the genres so you might also just say like from pop to something like you could just cl clarify you don't have to give all of it you can say you you know you have a lot of variety without spelling it all out like John said um and know that like when you start listing things you think you're you want to cover everything but that is when people's eyes start glazing over yeah totally okay and should we keep going yeah, let's go through. We're probably going in a little more detail than we probably will with everybody else, just because we do want to cover a lot of one sheets. But I think let's let's go through this entire one sheet. A song she co-wrote, Love Calls Me Home, is featured in the movie Christmas by Chance, released in December 2020 in Canada and 2021 in the USA. The song she co-wrote, Love My All, was in the movie Love in Aruba. There's probably just a little bit of like trimming that I would do here probably don't need to know when it, most people probably aren't interested in necessarily knowing when uh, a particular movie was released in specific countries necessarily so you could literally just chop that that released part off of there and you would literally save people a little bit of time again it's like if you can deliver the information make it easiest for people to understand it 
probably limit it to like 30 seconds of people's mental space to be able to read through everything. I don't know. And, I just, and when you consider... It doesn't, really add, it doesn't add a ton to what's already been, been said. So that, that would be like a prime candidate to me for editing out. Yeah. Yeah. I think something to consider is what is it that you want them to know? You're trying to tell them I've had songs in movies like uh, look at me. Right. So how can you say that without they don't need, they don't really care if it's December 2020 or where it was released. You could say, you know, you may have heard my songs or heard her songs in such and such movie or heard this song such and such in such and such movie. Clean, clear, quick. It doesn't have to be like a big list again of things that show where you're coming from and what you've done if you can consider like what what is the essence that i want them to take away from this information great um, yeah uh, go through want to read the last uh, paragraph here yeah catherine strives to capture the human experience in song ultimately she endeavors to emphasize we are all more alike than different her heart for people permeates her art yeah that's beautiful i mean i think I think you could maybe even get a little more clear in that. Um, but I think it helps you stand apart as a songwriter. And this is a great example, like leading it up to the top here of how this is how you are able to, it, you can do different genres and have different sounds and still have a through line that's the same. And this is your through line. This is your branding. This is your value. This is what you bring to the table. This is why somebody wants to work with you. Why somebody wants to listen to your music because they know it's going to have heart. They know that you're going to support the artist who who you're co-writing with to really feel like their voice is being heard and, and cultivating that for them. Um, I might trim this up just a little bit. It feels like you're saying the same thing a few couple of different times. Um, so maybe it can be all of one sentence or two sentences that ultimately says that. Yeah, I love this. And I think one thing that you could do to kind of just continue to dial this in is to perhaps even include a reference. You know, think mm, of nice. the artists, think of the artists that do exactly what it is that you're describing. Who are the artists that really inspire you? And you could start this out by saying like so and so and so and so. Catherine strives to capture yeah. the human experience in song. That's a great idea. So that would be a very cool way for you to not only hint to people kind of the style of your music and what your music actually sounds like, because what we want to do, we don't want to just describe the, the intention with the music. We want to actually give people an idea of what the music sounds like if possible. So that's one thing that I might suggest to throw in there that gives it again. It's like it's something that makes you unique and, and like your music taste is obviously going to be different from everybody else's. So, if you have like two popular artists that you're considering using, maybe think of like a, a second artist that's maybe not as popular that kind of gives your again. It's like if you pick two of the like top artists that are out there, it's going to sound less. It'll feel a little less. Uh, what am I looking for? Special than like if there's like one artist that maybe not everybody knows about that people will be like, oh, I wonder what that sounds like. Or somebody who's just like they're, they're more like an indie artist that sounds and is coming from the exact perspective that you are. I think that that might be a cool thing to try here. So I want to say like big round of applause to Catherine. Woo! Great job on this one sheet. I think it's looking really great so far. Hopefully we gave you some ideas of some things that you can try to like continue to refine this and get a final version of it done. Sorry, right, I've been let's... some kombucha. So it's like some of it's like uh, burping a little bit. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much human of it's like, beings being oh human beings. Yeah, I'm, that's all I, that's all I will ever be as a human being. <laughs> uh, all right, Amanda, this is great. So like I said, we're probably not going to go as in depth with every one sheet. Yeah, that we, we definitely need to now on because that like, it's like the listening sessions. Sometimes we have intentions of like, you know, making sure we get through a lot of songs, but it's like, once you get in there, you're like, Oh, this is so fun to do. And it's so fun to look at the different angles, but let's, we're going to give a little quicker feedback on, on a couple of others here. So let's start with Amanda's here. And this is looking good. Yeah. So I think, I think there is a little bit of like artifact, uh, artificing that's happening here with the mm -hmm. visual. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. I do think that this, uh, this photo, uh, it looks like a live shot, which is cool. You know, uh, just like what strikes out to me is the color scheme here. I like how the, the background matches the shirt and, uh, there's definitely like a passionate vocal that's being sung here. You can tell, and you're somebody who's an actual performing artist. That's what that tells me as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I can't tell. It just feels like the the words are a little bit blurry, but it might be a Zoom thing. But I mean, it's not 
it is blurry on my page here as I expand it. So I would maybe look at that too and how you can really make the it pop a little bit more to be a little bit more legible. As I expand it, it gets a little blurry, but um, let's read the copy here or some of it. If we've got a quote on the bottom, which is cool. Um, do you want to read it? Or what should we sure, sure, I can read it. Amanda is one of those rare, I'm gonna start with a quote. Amanda is one of those rare artists who speaks to you in a voice that gives compassion and registers pain. And whether you are listening to Amanda from the comfort of your couch or from the back of a smoke-filled club, you know immediately that you are the recipient of a gift. That's I so kinda wonder, kind of wonder why that's not at the very top of the page. Um, you know, I, I just think about like, I'm, I'm just kind of like, when I'm thinking of like the visual aspects that you have and the assets that are here, that's a very powerful statement, I feel. And uh, you could probably re like just like shorten that up a little bit too, perhaps uh, maybe like condense it so that it's a little bit more of a sound bite versus a paragraph uh, might be a good idea. I'm not exactly sure how I would do that off the top of my head, but that's just a thought. Uh, I like how I want to say like how much I like the centering on this. I feel that the the way the information is being relayed, it's kind of like really saying to me out loud, the most important stuff is up at the top, which is great. It's very clear to me that you're a singer songwriter. It's also clear to me from the picture that you're a performing singer songwriter. You're going out there and you're performing, which is very cool. And then, um, yeah, it's a good little bio there. And I think that there's a couple of just what I'm doing a quick scan. I'm seeing a couple grammar things that are kind of popping out to me. There's a little space. It looks like there's an extra space between listeners and two on the right hand side there. Uh, the and songs I'm also, are remind people. Yep. yep something that's right the there. Other, the other one that just instantly popped out to me. And then the other thing is I would probably take that Spotify logo and I would put it with the QR code. I would maybe put it up, up on top of the QR code just so that you can kind of associate the two together. I do like how they it, it kind of balances it out, but I feel like it, it's a little clunky to me, just my own personal aesthetic. I would probably find some way to put the the, the Spotify logo up on t like above the QR code. I like where the QR code is. Um, I think this might also benefit from a cool like background and finding a way like like Sonnet was saying, you know, you might be able to find a way if you did, depending on the background that you chose, uh, you might be able to find a way to get the copy a little bit higher contrast. So it's a little easier to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little more texture in there so that you can see. Yeah, that'd be cool. But you've got a really great foundation here, Amanda. And I love how you how you can bring in, you you pay tribute to themes of home, family, and the human condition. It's like, oh, that's how you are of service to a partner who might be looking for a song about home without being like, I write songs for sync that are about home and family. You know, you actually, these, you're a performer out in the world that's creating these songs that actually are about these themes because these are real human experiences that we have um so i like the way that you've brought attention to that as well um okay let's look at one more here yeah let's look at one more by the way again congratulations amanda for doing the work how's that feel to do the work right doing the work all right, who's up next? Oh, look at this. Pretty. Very pretty. Wow, I love the texture in here. She's got this, I don't know, kind of thing going in the background. It gives some texture to this picture. She's got a moon up here, the night sky. It all kind of like fits with her photo. I don't know, haven't even been read what her songs are about, but I have a feeling of what her music is just by looking at this and the colors she's used, the images she used, the moon that's in there. Um, and then yet yeah, like, I don't even need to necessarily read it if her music is congruent to this image to know what she might be about. Yeah. So question for everybody. Doesn't this one sheet immediately elicit some type of a response just in terms of like the vi how visually striking it is? Mm -hmm. I feel like the and doesn't the copy really pop out there? Yeah. So a couple things I'm noticing just real quick with this. I love it. I think the design is cool. Again, I would just with my own aesthetics, I would try to to put the, the Spotify logo more with the QR code. Um, 
and find a way to do that. There might be some other element that you could put on the on the left hand side, like a quote or something like that. Um, I love the image. I the background, even with uh, zoom, I can tell it's a little grainy. So I would get a high res on that background. You can definitely tell that it's it's grainy compared to everything else. I think once it's if if you get a clearer background image, it'll pop even more. Um, I love this copy. Let's see. Let's uh, whatever whatever. Sh I shortly read a little bit of it, but uh, I just want to go through here. So one thing I was thinking of when I was reading the copy is that it does feel like it crowds the page just a hair. It crowds those left and right margins. So what I might do if I was you is like just bring in the copy just a little bit so that it it just doesn't quite crowd the left and right sides so much, and then there probably are some words that you might like to bold in here. And I think that'll make the copy itself look more interesting mm -hmm. and more engaging. It'll that. also draw to the attention of whoever it is who's reading it the most important things in the copy. Mm -hmm. I love this font that you've used here too for the copy. The pairings, yeah, the pairings of the fonts is great. Mm -hmm. Like I love the, you, all the fonts work together. I might also, a suggestion I might have is to make your name bigger the Susan Harmon up the top, I would make that bigger. And if there is a bold version of that font, I would try that. Uh, it feels like it's it's almost sinking into the clouds a little bit when it should be a little bit more the star of the show. But overall, I think this is amazing. Oh, one other thing I might suggest. I oh, One thing I wanted to say is like, isn't it amazing too how much depth that this one sheet has? Mm -hmm. There's like so much depth with it. It's not only the background, but the image that pops out at the top. And then the there's like that spiral kind of almost like like notes, like the like a like a music notes kind of I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Staff. Yeah, whatever, a staff. Yeah. <laughs> I have don't no have to talk about staffs training. anymore. It's like what are those notes things called again? <laughs> I have zero formal music training, so uh it never stopped me from succeeding in music, but uh okay, yeah. humble for the words. But uh the other thing I was gonna say. Just another little quick thing. Maybe consider with this photo some type of a frame around it. Maybe there is a little bit of a frame. I can't really tell, but I think I that don't see a frame, but I think a little thin white frame that kind of matches the same yep. white. That would be really beautiful. I think that'd be a really nice touch, mm -hmm. but you're so close with this. I feel yeah. like it's, it's like I want to pull this open in Canva and just like make some little adjustments. Anytime I see something that I feel is really close, I'm like, oh, if I just do this and just make this a little bigger stuff, it makes me excited. It's so fun. And then you get to be like, oh, what would this look like? Yeah. Um, and I just like Beth Gibson, Kate Bush and Dido just come off the page. You're like, ooh, what is that? Like, those are such amazing artists. You want to know more about what's happening over here. So really great job, Susan Hartman. Amazing. <sighs> Great job. Great job, everybody. How is everybody feeling in terms of these? One, are you getting valuable feedback, everybody, in terms of it? Are you seeing some things, what we're talking about, that apply to your one sheet as well? Awesome. We're getting ones I'm not even asking for, but it, drop a one if you... I love it. <laughs> drop a one, 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 one. If you're getting valuable feedback on the one sheet, on your own one sheet from just seeing us do work with other people... Awesome. Awesome. Because like, here's the thing. It's not rocket science. Design work is not rocket science. Making something that's visually impactful, making something that really comes from the heart and really says what you're trying to say. It's not, you don't have to like have a graduate degree. You don't have to go to MIT to do it. It's just, it's, you know, it's really practice. A lot of this is practice. It's, it's practice not only in like how we use Canva, which is like a whole new thing for, for a lot of folks, uh, but it's also like how, how used to are we of like really talking from the heart and really saying what it is that we, and, and declaring, make a declaration of like what it is that we're put on this earth to do, which is mm -hmm. so important. Like we get, again, like if you don't have a destination in mind with what you're doing, you're not going to go to the place you want to go. So we want to make sure you get there. Yeah, which we should just take a minute to tell you guys about what we're going to be offering this next month um, along these lines. If you're wanting more of this, tomorrow's our last day together with this. If you guys want more of this, we're going to be offering a four week brand slam with us, only open to 50 people um, so that we can really make sure you have some clarity uh, and you're getting so many of these pieces. So the one sheet is the one piece. And most of you will come in with a pretty good set of one sheets ready. But from there, we're going to build your EPK, your pitching emails, your assets. We're going to make sure that 
when 2023 hits, you're not trying to figure out your strategy and what you stand for and who you are and and where you need to be. You're going to be ready to press send. You're going to be ready. Like when the industry opens back up again, you're like, this is my release. This is my goal. These are my brand assets. This is the photo shoot that I got into place because I needed something to update the look that I'm actually really going for and how I'm going to be of value. Um, so we're going to meet once a week. You guys get homework. You'll have support every week from our, it's called the brand slam. And we have supporters in the group every week doing um, homework calls with you and integration calls to make sure that you're on task and they are called our hitting coaches. So they will be there to, they're also extremely amazing artists that have great branding themselves. Um, you get a bunch of bonuses. It's, it's just an incredible spot. That's, that's really the overview of it. Do you want to go into a little bit more of the detail, John? Yeah, I'd love to just talk about this too, because it's, it, it's really an accelerator. Like, so everything that we've done over these five days, we've done a, taken a lot of action. Now imagine taking the momentum that you've built over these, like we're only in day four, but imagine mm -hmm. taking this momentum and really taking the next like 30 days to really ramping it up to getting live mentorship every single week. We do live live calls. There's going to be tons of bonuses. Uh, and at the end, the results you're going to get, this is going to be a comprehensive experience for indie artists. You're going to get at the end of this, you'll have a one sheet, you'll have pro bio, you'll have elevator pitch, you'll have your promo photos, you'll have your artwork, you'll have your EPK, you'll have strategies and specific pitch emails that will workshop as a group together. And most importantly, you're going to have the mindset to succeed with all of this in 2023. So it's it's really going to be amazing. So we're uh, should we drop it in? Uh, yeah. Should we drop? It in? Yeah, Let's drop it in. It's only open to fifty people. Um, again, it's it's small. Um, and at the end of all of this, you guys will have pitching practice with a music supervisor, and you'll have uh, pitching practice with an agency. So you're going to be like, here's my elevator pitch. Here's my one sheet. Here's my EPK. You're going to have that direct feedback. Um, it, this is, this is the brand slam, um, week uh, shells. I know you said you had to hop out for a call. So we're just in the middle of telling people how you can continue this work. If you really want to step up for the next 30 days, um, you can check out the schedule here. It comes to about a hundred dollars a week. So it's a hundred dollars a week for four weeks for you to really start 2023 in a place of direction it's full of value. We're going to actually have a Canva workshop in there. We're going to have an Instagram building workshop in there. We're going to have, there's a, there's a bunch of other little workshops that are going to be there to help support you. Um, formulas for um, pitching, all of that's going to be in there. And then, like I said, you're going to, you're going to have Wendy Griffith as a pitching partner that you're going to have time to like pitch her. And she's going to say like, that made sense. That didn't. Um, and Julian Drucker. So you have an agency and a supervisor giving you feedback on this. And that's going to be, it's not going to be like, Hey, the first week you're going to be expected to oh, do no, that's week four. What we're going to be doing is going to be day week four. We're going to be setting up. It's the special thing we're going to call batting practice where you're basically going to get the chance as a group, we're going to be bringing in two awesome people. We're bringing in Julian Drucker, amazing freelance music supervisor, and Wendy Griffiths, who runs a great sync agency, uh, including their credits. D Julian Drucker, his credits include 911 Lone Star, Love Island, The Great Muslim American Road Trip, Justice USA, Sundance Film Festival trailer, so on and so forth. Wendy Griffiths, she's the owner of True Music. She's an accomplished senior level executive with 25 plus years of experience in licensing. She's worked with the licensing and marketing teams for BMG, WB Records, and Position Music. So really like top notch level people. They're going to also be able to give you feedback on your EPKs. Like it's one of the main goals. We want to get that ready when we get everybody ready. And also at the end of it, this is going to be really fun, is that the top packages that the top EPKs we're going to include in a sampler Two Indies going to put together a sampler. It's going to be called the brand slam. And what we're going to do is we're going to send that package out to all of our licensing agency contacts, which we have an extensive network of licensing agency contacts. We are going to pitch the top EPKs that are created during the four weeks so that it's, it's the That's potential kind of worth there. the entire thing right there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. What days are the calls going to be guys? So the calls are going to be on Mondays. Great question. They're going to be on Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.
So not Perfect. terribly dissimilar to what we're doing here. Uh, then one of the calls is going to be because we're working around, it's in November, we're going to be working around Thanksgiving. So the last call we're going to do on the 30th, which will be a Wednesday. But there will be replays for all the calls. And just if you miss a call, it's okay. Catch the replay. And what we're going to have, we're going to have batting coaches. So we're going to have hitting coaches. And these are really awesome indie artists. Uh, actually, pretty much everybody here probably knows Kamara Morell. She's going to be one of our hitting coaches. Another really awesome indie artist, KP Wolf, is going to be another one of our hitting coaches. As well, uh, Cinder Shine's going to be joining us for the Brand Slam and chipping in with her unbelievable support and knowledge around all of this. So it's going to be be amazing you're going to have lots of support and accountability around this there's going to be so many bonuses thing is we've got so we didn't even talk about uh, there's an amazing independent artist who's touring around right now and does all of her own pr and her name's emily anderson she's going to be teaching a special workshop it's a bonus that everybody who signs up for brand slam gets and that workshop she will go through exactly how she has procured really awesome write-ups for her music so it's not just you're getting like oh, okay it's it's i get an epk i get this you also get strategies that you can take out into the artist world this stuff will also as we know it co-mingles with the licensing world it's all super important so when people type up your name in google or whatever search engine they're using using you know there's gonna be cool articles potentially that could pop up if you do the work you follow through with these strategies that are given you follow through with the branding work that we do together there can be amazing things that can start to happen for you to in 2023 and I just want to say for the first 25 people that sign up for brand slam and this is only for the first 25 people who sign up we are doing a special master class with Jason Kramer now, Jason Kramer is a legendary KCRW DJ. He was the first to introduce star artists like Billie Eilish, 1975, Florence and the Machines, Tones and I, Ed Sheeran, and so many more, and perhaps nobody better on the planet for an indie artist to learn about the importance of branding than Jason Kramer. So this is gonna be crazy. We're gonna be doing that masterclass with him and 25 of the Brand Slammers. Where are the brand slammers? Who's a brand slammer? I mean, we've already got signups, you guys. Seriously, it's going to sell out. So if you are interested, grab your seat. We've made it as affordable as we possibly can. We have loaded it with content. This is about starting 2023 with a freaking running start. And, you know, John and I are both indie artists. This is what we have seen people need. We try to offer what we see the gaps are. And this is what we have kept coming up against of like, Okay, but taking the feedback of the agencies and the music supervisors and the people that we work with in the industry and looking at where the artists come in and, and the confusion of, well, I'm not an artist, I'm a producer, and how do I make it clear? And all of this is to help support you bridge that gap so that you can make it very clear what your value is and how these partners can be of how you can be of service with the partners and you can have these partnerships because again and again and again we hear they want to have your back the music supervisors are music fans the agencies want amazing music but they need to know what it is that you do and they need to know how it is how, what you stand for so this is this is a chance to really dive into that work to have our support in doing that um and we see a big need for it so it's the perfect timing for it you have the time to like get that running start. And if you guys have questions, let us know. November 7th, 10 a.m. is the first call. Um, so it starts in a week and a half, too. You know, the thing and is so funny. The thing is so funny about this song. She's here and she's in chemo, by the way. Oh, Cinder. Everybody send out your good vibes to Cinder right now. Uh, we love you, Cinder. Talk about showing up. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was going to say is really remarkable about all this is that people are going to start in this next month. They're going to start, you know, the energy kind of goes down and, the, and it yeah. happens in the music industry. It's just kind of like the natural, like over the course of November, over the course of December, everybody's kind of going down. What if you were going up? Mm -hmm. What if you were going up and carrying that momentum into 23 you're not needing to set a resolution like i'm gonna get my shit figured out i'm gonna get like all of this i'm gonna figure out what it is that i was put on this earth to do i'm gonna figure out how i need to say it so that people understand me loud and clearly for the first time mm -hmm. what if you don't have to do that on january 1st mm -hmm. what if you just have to press send 
because you've got it all set up. I mean, that's, that's what, what we, we all want, want right? On this call, we want yeah. that for everybody. Yeah. And hopefully you're like, the thing is, if you practice the things that we are doing this week alone, you are going to get so much closer to that. Yeah. But trust us, this is going to be an amazing experience you will not want to miss. And we're not going to do this live again. This is something that we're committing to doing live. The next time that we offer this, it's going to be a pre-recorded, some type of online pre-recorded course. So please jump in with us. Jump in with us as we are really like, we're so excited with this. We've got everybody lined up to help you succeed with this. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I mean, lined up. This is what we all need. We all need that time to reflect. It's an amazing time to sit still and reflect and then take action. And yeah, I mean, we just can't say enough. So if you've got questions, you guys ask us, we're here. Um, it's a one-time payment. If you, if there's a link and we can just grab the link one more time for you. Drop it um, in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a one-time payment. Uh, it comes to about a hundred dollars a week. So we hope you join us. We hope you do. We definitely want to get to some more one sheets. So thanks for listening to the offer that we had to make here. Uh, and we're so excited about that. We're really excited. It's, it's actually coming up, but you got to act now because it's going to be, we're going to be taking this offline in a week. So just heads up. It's not always going to be available. Got to act now. Time's to act now. But now we're going to dive into some more one sheets because it's so fun to do. Wow, this is cool. I like the logo already. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, let's let's read this. All right. If yeah, you're in I love the that logo. Placing music, you owe it to yourself to check out what Tone Freak music is doing. Wow, that's great. I would, you know what? Instantly, I would highlight the name. I would bold the name and make the, the copy underneath it just a little bit smaller. Um, just the music supervisor, Netflix. What you could do is uh, you bold the, the Vanessa Jones, then you uh, maybe italicize the, uh, make it, make all the other things, the music supervisor, Netflix, and USA Network a little bit smaller, and then italicize the, uh, the music supervisor. Just to kind of like, with this, it's, it, it visually just kind of makes it a little more interesting than just a block of text, right? I'm just yeah, looking. These are amazing quotes, though. These are fantastic. But yeah, what a great quote to get, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Derek, I think what com comes up for me is I, I wonder if there's a way to pull the image down so that the black, the you know, like it comes below. So it's like your words are kind of going over this. I kind of want to see what it, I would just, this is what I would do if it was mine, is I would play with what it looks like to have that kind of pulled down and those quotes like a little bit above that and then the bottom part because for me I'm trying to figure out what it is that maybe feels a little bit off maybe it's that in what I'm looking at here yeah that, that might not be a bad idea you could actually center the tone freak music make what I would possibly do and it's really easy to do in Canva you just click uh, you click on that little like plus icon that's uh, above the design and then it actually just creates a copy of it so what mm -hmm. I would do yeah, is yeah, I would, yeah. What I would do is I would move all your copy down and then I would make that tone freak music like really big in the center, like almost like it's the moon coming up over these mountains, uh, just that it like really is taking precedent. And then what you could do is possibly make those quotes smaller and put tuck them up above uh, mm -hmm. in those corners without making it look too crowded. And then what you could do is that in that way, you could possibly uh, you might have more space to I, I do like the the layout down below. I do feel like, again, you're kind of crowding the corners a little bit and you're crowding the side a little bit so maybe you could shorten the copy up just a little bit uh, so that you can make it a little bit bigger and easier to read and then also what you might want to do is put an effect on the background of that paragraph of copy because right now it's getting kind of wrecked a little bit by those lines I love the like the effect I think it's a very cool visual in the background but maybe you could put some type of a uh, like a background uh, shadow or something like that there's like a, a background you could just like put a, uh, a color on the background just make it like a dark gray or something like that and you can play around with the uh, the translucence on it just so that that copy pops just a little bit more maybe put a creative frame around that photo on the right hand side and then i would definitely it looks like the background is still on that soundcloud i would get a soundcloud uh just download a version of the logo that's like transparent mm -hmm. and then put that on there and then i would put a qr code that takes them to the soundcloud page that's what i would do just quick thoughts on this i haven't read the the, the paragraph of copy i don't know if we uh we really have time to to give too many more notes on this, but that's like just quick notes that I would give on this. That's what I would do. 
Okay, let me pull another one up here. Awesome job, though. You know, congratulations. Amazing, amazing job, and way to take action. I think that's like the the biggest the biggest difference. Um, deadline on the payment, where it's going to be up for a week. But um, if you want to get that bonus of the masterclass with Jason Kramer, um, I would do it sooner so that yeah, you I would sign up right now. If you, I would sign up right now if you want to get the bonus class with Jason Kramer, just to guarantee that you get a spot. Because it's going to be this is this is not somebody who's easy to get access to, and this is going to be a very small private mastermind with him. So we're going to be doing a uh, a private Q and A with him. Uh, let's see. This looks good. I yeah, like that. I love it. How fun. Great. Love it. Great. I love the layout. I feel like that it's clean. Look mm -hmm. how clean this design is. Mm -hmm. See for yourself. I love that. That's such a great way of putting it. See for yourself. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. And I like this photo here. There's so much attitude in this. That's really great. Singer, songwriter, and YouTuber. This is great. You ever pet a chinchilla of the utmost softness? Me neither. But that's how her voice sounds. <laughs> As a chinchilla <laughs> owner, I can confirm. <laughs> I really love this. Yeah, the commenter. And it's funny. Yeah. See, you're using humor here, and I think it's great. I think it totally works. Like, this totally works. Uh, the only thing that I would say in terms of uh, because you're a YouTuber, maybe your photo, your main primary photo should be, if, if you are playing music live, it might be cool to put a photo that more shows you in your YouTube setup. Yeah. Yeah. As a thought. Versus like something that just looks like it's more like a uh, like almost like a headshot kind of like staged thing on top of a cool. It's a very cool photo. I love the photo, and I think that the colors are really nice and and all that stuff. But it just makes me think, oh, either either that photo or perhaps uh, although I think that bottom right photo is so cool. You're yeah, gonna keep that bottom that. right photo, but I think it has to be something like right right like the other one we were looking at, where it's right away you understand like you don't have to read YouTuber to know that she's a YouTuber. So you must know that she's got some success in that. If there was a photo that kind of gave us that without even reading words would be great. Yeah. And and I don't know if there's probably you're probably a YouTube partner at this point, but so you might want to put like if there's some special uh, achievement that you've reached in terms of your viewership and stuff like that, that would be a cool thing to put on there. And then also uh, you're going to want to test with your QR code, drop the QR code in there and just make sure that it still works with the head over the QR code. I love the idea. I think it's cool, but you just got to make sure practically that it works for people when they pull it up. But other than that, I think this is a, it's a slam dunk. This is great. This is great so far. I love your use of colors. I love the, the spacing with everything. Your links are really easy for people to understand. Nice. Beautiful. It's great. Great job. Yeah. It makes you want to know more, right? That's the, that's the whole thing for sure. Let's jump Mar. in. The hey, Mar, how's it going? This is beautiful. On the road, you guys. <laughs> hey. Drive safe, okay? No, not driving though, but um, okay. my wife is. But, but I'm here, I'm here. Okay, great, great. Well, this looks great. Um, so you got the QR code on there. I like the circular QR code. That's like a, a touch that I haven't seen a lot of. Um, so that's that's that looks unique. With the circular picture, I like that. Yeah, I like how those... Got the boxy feel. The one thing I'm a little concerned with is just, uh, you know, if you wanted to print this out, you'd want to make a perhaps like an eight and eleven, eight and a half by eleven type uh, size format of this. Uh, is one thing that I would say, like right off the bat. Let's read the copy here a little bit. I feel like the there's also you could probably move Mar over just a little bit. It feels like it's kind of lopsided on the left hand side, just a hair. And also, I'm seeing a little bit of crowding that's happening on the left hand side with the copy. So you could probably find a way. I think the solution is you might have to chop some of your copy a little bit. It is a lot of copy. The less copy you have on the page, then the more space you're going to have to play around with. But I love how striking this is when it pops open. I think it's super easy to read, which is great. Um, yeah, and it feels like you, you know, you've, you're... You, you you mentioned your distinctive Peruvian roots here. You're kind of like give you give that feel without even saying without us even having to read it. And then you have a live shot plus your release, like a picture of a of a song that's on Spotify. So we know not only do you play live, but you're seriously like releasing music. It kind of completes the whole picture for us without reading a word, um, which is phenomenal. 
And I just noticed uh, it, it's trans advocate. I think it'd be trans advocate, right? Unless I'm I'm missing something there. Oh so then, yeah. It might be like a little misspelling there. Uh, so yeah, just go through when you when you go through, do a little proofreading, a little uh, grammar, you know, just with a fine tooth comb with that as well. But I, I think that this is like certainly uh, a good candidate for a little bit of a rewrite slash, uh, you know, just getting a little bit of the copy uh, pared down a little bit. Uh, I, also, one thing I and we talked about this yesterday. It's just you always want to be a little bit careful when you're putting like your own personal phone number on a on a document. It might be better. I don't know how you feel about like somebody potentially, you know, anybody potentially getting your phone number. Uh, but it's you know just in terms of your. Yeah, I think that just got left behind from July because I did this one back in you know, for the Get Rep conference. And oh great! So I I revised it a little bit. I didn't have much time because we were leaving this morning. So. Um, but yeah, and I also wanted to ask you guys about putting the, you know, the Spotify, the, the name of the single there versus maybe, I don't know, I don't like the blue with the whole scheme, doesn't it like, doesn't it just clash? Yeah, I, I do feel like the blue kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, I wonder if there's a way to change the, the color scheme of the box around it. Like maybe if it's just the album cover or you could change the color scheme of the rest of the document. Like you could change the rest of instead of it having red on the left hand side, you could change it to blue for this release. Might be a way to kind of give everything a little bit more of a congruence with the uh, the color scheme. That would be my thoughts on it. Uh, but I also like uh, there's there's a cool again. It's very cool how like there's red stripes or red uh, like the uh, suspenders. Those look like suspenders and perhaps like a guitar strap that are red and, and it matches kind of the palette there. So I'm not sure if the photo then will kind of pop out in a way that's like uh, sticking out a little too much. But the only way to know is just by changing the color scheme around a little bit. I think this is cool. It's not not far you know, from where you want it to be. And just in terms of like the format, you just want to make sure if you were to go to like a conference and you wanted to print this out, that it would be easy for people to, to print it out and, and or to be able to, yeah, so that there wouldn't be any like challenges in terms of like when it resizes, it starts to look weird. Um, you know, making it in a format that is easy to print out would be great. Yeah, I think there could be some editing here. I also don't mind the color of the picture. Um, it matches your shirt. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's, it doesn't bother me that much, but I think, yeah, just making it a little bit more concise and something that could be handed to somebody or if they click on it, it, it fits within this like scrolling on your phone sort of thing. I, this wouldn't quite fit on the screen, you know, so um, these are it's really phenomenal. I love it. One thing yeah. I might also consider is uh, something to help separate the top from the bottom part of the page, perhaps even like a background image that only kind of kicks in on the second half of it. Like perhaps even like a sunset or a sunrise, like something where like there's like dark on the bottom and then it kind of like opens up in some way on the top or the vice versa where it's like lighter up top and then it kind of like darkens below just because I think it might be nice to have like some kind of separating between the top part of the copy and the bottom part of the copy. Um, there's just stuff I would play around with. I'm not saying it would look better, but as a designer, what I would do is just, I would try that out as well. Like some type of a background uh, design that only shows up on the black part of it. Not that, like that left little corner, the left bottom right, left hand corner. You want to kind of keep that solid, the gradient. I like that. I think it's cool. Oh, one thing, the Instagram logo is also really hard to read out. I didn't even notice the Instagram logo until now. So I would probably just grab like a, uh, a black and white version with the white kind of popping out um, as the, the logo color. Okay, so you guys, really quickly, this is not over. We have another day tomorrow. You guys have homework. It's already 10 o'clock. Look at this. We have homework tonight. You guys, we're going to be dropping this homework. We need, uh, this is this is like where you take all of this and have a plan. What are the three actions you're going to take over the next 60 days to get your brand as a music maker ready for 2023 so that when 2023 hits, you can press go. You are ready, you are clear, you are confident. And I think that's one of the things that comes from this is that confidence. No matter where you are, you know what you stand for. You know how to fill in the gap. You know what that person's working on. You're like, hey, I make that music or no, I don't. Whatever it is, you're going to be able to really have that confidence of taking your seat at the table. And that's that's kind of like what happens when you step into this work and you take, start taking that ownership. Um, so the homework will be dropped into the Facebook group. If you have questions on our brand slam, DM us, email us. 
it's it's on Mondays. Um, it ends December. Uh, it ends November thirtieth. Yeah. The last call is on a Wednesday, November thirtieth. All of the other calls are the seventh, fourteenth, and twenty first at ten a.m. on Mondays. Yeah. Yep. So if you have yeah. questions, let us know. Um, we urge you to join us for this. Like, think about where you want to be in twenty twenty three. What do you have? What do you want to have under your belt? And have what you've been doing so far been working for you? Because this is what we see. It's like, okay, I'm going to do it on my own. Okay, you definitely, definitely can. And you can do it over four weeks with some momentum, with some community, with some clarity, with some feedback, and really have it a different way than you've done it in the past. So we urge you to take that accountability, to say yes. <clears throat> we are here for any questions. We'll see you tomorrow. You must show up tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to put this all into action. We're going to have some artists joining us. We're going to see this in real life. How has this affected the way that they show up? Um, we, we're going to have some big conversations about that. And we'll be talking more about your strategies and your one sheets. So see us. See you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you for being on this call and showing up this there. week. Tomorrow all right. Thank you. Call. See you in Brand Thank Slam you. too. All right.